Hello everyone, Rick's here. In this video, what I thought I would do is go over some troubleshooting ideas here for you. I think that if we go through this video, if you watch this video, that if you run into any trouble doing your image transfers, that this will help you to understand how the process works so that you can eliminate what the problem happens to be. Because many times you might assume that there's an issue with the paper when in fact it has something to do with something else. Usually it has something to do with the gluing. So we're going to go over that and I'm going to demonstrate so that it's really clear to everybody what to expect when you glue paper to a substrate. Okay, for this video what I'm going to do is use or reuse these little wooden coasters here that were done in previous videos because, well, I could use the backs of them and I, and I hate to waste. And if this is not enough, well, I have some blanks here. They're, red, they're pretty cheap on eBay, so you know. But I, I hate to waste, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use these right here. Now to start off with, we're going to put two here. Now I printed off a couple of sheets of paper here. Now both of these are printer paper. They're both printer paper and they were both printed on my Hewlett Packard uh, color laser jet printer. I believe it's the M254DW if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there's no difference in the printing whatsoever except this paper right here is the Ricks Can Do It Quick Transfer Paper. Now I just said it was printer paper because yes they are both printer paper but this one is specifically coated with my coating on here so that you can transfer your laser printed images onto something else. But I need to demonstrate something for everybody here on how paper with images on it act when you glue them onto, let's say, wood. So first off, I'm going to cut out an image from each sheet. Now I've marked these so that I'll know which is which and the regular uncoated paper is the one that's going to be on the left hand side and then we're going to do the coated paper the Ricks can do it quick transfer paper will be on the right hand side. Alright, I'm going to put these aside for now. Now I'm going to use my favorite glue. In this case it's matted gel medium. Now this one happens to say liquid text but actually I have in here Blix. Let me show you what that looks like. That came out of this right here. So you can buy a big thing like this for really cheap and then I just keep refilling the uh, old container that I have here. And people always ask me, well, what kind of gel medium do you use? You know, I don't really think uh, the brand really matters. I'm using two different brands. This one here seems to be the most popular. It is probably the most expensive. So I'm not sure whether it's really worth spending the extra money when you can buy something cheaper, you know, but I leave that up to you. But I do use the matte gel, all right? Not the glossy, I use the matte. So, go ahead and open this up. Now, a subscriber had suggested that to prevent those 
clumps that I was getting and then having to scrape them off of the substrate is to put some cling film, some plastic film on the top before I put the lid on. So I think that's a great idea and I hope that it kept the clumpies off. It is a little difficult to take off the plastic though because I think it glues itself on. So I may have to get another one of these before I could replace it. Alright. Now I'm using these sponge applicators here. They're cheap. Get a big old bag of them. And then you can dispose of them when you're done. Now I tend to wash most of them. So many of these are going for their second or third use. You can see there's a little remnant of the fact that I have used this before. Um, I don't believe in wasting things unnecessarily. So anyway, now what you want to do is you want to add a thin film. Now as I say in virtually all my videos on transfers is that you want to make sure that you put on enough so that it is still wet. And I use my finger a lot, most times. I still have those hard bits. That's a little unfortunate. Let me get a paper towel. Make sure you have paper towels too, by the way, because you're going to need them for the removal process. But you apply a thin film of the gel medium And you don't want it super wet because it will cause the paper to wrinkle. All right? But you, you want to make sure that you have enough on there that it's still wet before you put the image on there. So we're going to put the image on there like so. Now another thing that I use is some kind of plastic like this. It's hard plastic. So I can lay on top and you want a brayer. And I'm naming all these things because people say, hey, could you, could you list the items that you use? Well, I'm telling you what they are in the video. So, is a brayer. It's a rubber roller. Okay. Matted gel medium. Sponge brushes. And, of course, your transfer paper. And, and whatever you're going to use to, to put the uh, transfer on. Now, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that... If I get any kind of ooze out, it isn't going to get on my brayer. By having this plastic protector on here, I'm not getting it on the brayer and then smearing it on the back of the transfer paper. Now remember, the one on the left is not transfer paper, it's just regular printer paper that I printed on. But I want to make a point. Because I, I don't think everybody realizes that paper that is properly glued, gel medium glue, I call that gluing, that if you properly glue the paper, I don't care if it's transfer paper or regular paper, any paper, you should not be able to remove it if it's properly dry. So. If let's say for example you're using the transfer paper and you are able to remove the paper but your image comes off with the paper instead of staying on what you're transferring to that's not a problem with the paper because if the paper was actually properly glued you would not have been able to have pulled that image off and you're going to see my point here in a minute now Again, a nice thin layer. You don't want it too thick that you're going to cause the, uh, the image to smear. If you have a problem with smearing, uh, then that is also from adding too much. If, if you wrinkle the paper, you added too much. You want a thin layer, a thin layer that is just moist, okay? You don't want it so thin that it's basically dry before you put the transfer on. So we're going to put this on like so.
Oops. I still had some sticky from the last one there, so I'm going to have to do that. Shame on me. See, I've already wrinkled that paper, but anyway, I'll be able to just demonstrate my point here. I'm going to take the excess off. This is the transfer paper, all right? On the right is the transfer paper. Okay, so transfer paper, regular paper that has no coating on it, and you want to make sure it's completely dry, 100%. I speed it up with a heat gun. You can use a heat gun or a hair dryer, or you can let it sit out for hours. It's up to you. I like to do the three, four minutes with a heat gun. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, three, maybe four minutes. And uh, you want to make sure that it is dry. If, if by chance it's not dry or you're not sure, then wait a little longer. Do it for a minute or two longer just to make sure. Sorry for the camera wobbling there, but the table shakes the thing that holds it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, now, here's what I want to get across. This is regular printer paper, okay? It's not coated with anything. It's just what you get out of a package of paper. Now, if you try to peel it off, you should not be able to. See, it should tear because you glued the paper on. You can't get this paper off. All right, there's no way that you should be able to see like I got this little corner here. Okay, you see that? There's no way that you should get that paper off. Now, I'm going to wet it just like I'm going to wet this just to keep demonstrating this point. If you were to wet regular printer paper, and this is the method most people use. They They'll wet it and then they'll rub the paper off. They can't peel it off. They're going to have to rub it off. So we're going to wet it really good here. And this is water. People ask me, what are you, what are you coating on to make it peel? It's water. Just water. There's nothing else here. It's not a special removing elixir of any kind. Okay. Now I have really soaked this pretty good. Now I'm going to try to peel this up. And you can see that it will not peel off. Okay? You can't peel it off. Now the other thing that I will do with the transfer paper, so I'm going to do the same with this, is I'm going to do take up the excess water. That way you can see I'm doing the same exact thing and still you're not going to be able to peel anything. What you can do is you can take your finger and you can rub it. You just go like this and just rub all that paper off. Now imagine if you had to do this for 8 by 10. Right now I'm only doing it with the small 4 inch disc. And you got to make this mess. All right. Okay, I'm not going to do this whole thing, but the point is, is that you can see the paper is still on there. You wet it again, you rub it some more, you wait for it to dry, then you make sure that there's no haze. If there's paper haze, you wet it again, you rub it some more, until you get all the paper off. And yes, you will risk rubbing parts of your image off. Those of you who have done this know exactly what I'm talking about. This is why I don't like doing this, and that's why I made this paper. Now, let me clean this up, and then we're going to go on to this one. Okay, now, remember my point. If you properly glued the paper, just like this one, 
you probably glue the paper, there is no peeling this off, okay? If I start to peel this off, look, it's going to tear, okay? This part wasn't even glued down. The part that's glued down is still stuck. See, there's a little, little part not glued down. If I pull on it, look, you cannot peel this paper off either, 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 all right? When you glue paper, I don't care what paper, if the surface accepts paper glued to it, you should not be able to pull off properly glued paper from your whatever. So if you have tile and you're saying, hey, you know, I'm pulling the image off the tile, well, that's because you didn't have it glued down in the first place. You cannot pull the paper off. I don't care if it's regular paper or if it's pr glued paper. If the surface you're gluing on allows you to glue stuff, glue paper on it, it should stick. So you can test that, get your tile, whatever it is, and just glue regular paper to it. And if you've got glaze on it, you'll probably be able to peel the whole thing off because of the glaze is hard to glue to. And that's why I say in my other video on tiles, you must completely remove this glaze to make it where you can glue paper to it. Now, now that I've shown that whether it is transfer paper or regular paper, if you've properly glued it and the surface can be glued to, and we know that wood, you can easily glue to wood. There's no glaze like with tile that you have to remove. Okay, now I'm going to wet it like I did this, and you're going to see the difference between transfer paper and regular paper. So, again, we're going to wet it. Make sure it soaks that water in. Okay, and again, I'm going to take a paper towel and just take up the excess. It makes it easy to peel off in one or two poles if you take the excess water off. Now I'm going to try to get a corner here. And watch. See the difference? Just trying to get a corner here to peel, but look, all the paper is off except for a little bit. I got it wet. If you wet it, it'll release. But just there's the difference, okay? Notice that if it's the transfer paper, it comes off. Whereas regular paper does not. Now, here's the thing. Remember, I could not peel the paper off dry. Okay? And if you, if you moisten it and you peel it and the image doesn't stay on the wood, that's because it was not glued to the wood in the first place. So try, try to understand, try to visualize that, okay? If it was glued, the only thing that should be able to be removed is the paper. Because between the paper and the image is a coating. There's a coating that separates the two. The, print, the image that you print is on the coating. It's not on the paper. So if you can peel the paper off and the image comes off with the paper, then the image was never glued to the wood or to the tile or whatever it is. Okay? So that's very important to understand is that, well, it's getting dark in here. So if you have problems with pulling it off and you say parts, part of the image came off and it's not on the, on the wood or whatever, 
Well, that's because that part had no glue to hold that part of the image onto here, or you didn't allow it to dry completely, and that area was still not dry. That was still a wet area. And it has to be dry because you need something to hold the image onto the substrate. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand and see how that works. Okay, so as long as it's properly glued, the image will stay adhered to the substrate. I don't care what it is. It could be plastic, tile, glass, wood, fabric, whatever. If you can glue regular paper to whatever it is you wonder whether you can transfer to using the transfer paper, if you can glue regular paper that when it's dry, there's no way you can peel it off and you just end up with, with paper that's stuck, then you know that the transfer paper is going to work and is going to allow you to transfer an image onto whatever that substrate is because you know that it has glue ability. It has to have it. And if any part of the image does, does, comes off when you pull the transfer paper, it's because that part was never glued on. It's not a problem with the paper. It's a problem with the gluing application, the whole process that you did. Okay? Because if you glued it properly, if the paper had a problem, you can wet it and it still wouldn't come off. It would be just like this because that's the only difference between the two is the coating. And when you wet the paper, that coating goes away, separates the paper from the image. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this troubleshooting video in case you have any difficulties whatsoever. And remember that anytime that there is a defect on your image, or if you have lines that are missing or whatever, it's because it was either not properly glued or you used too much glue that the paper wrinkled. And wrinkled paper is, is nothing but air bubbles in line shapes, right? If you're, it's like wrinkly skin, you know, it's lumpy and whatever. So it, anything like that, if you don't get a perfect transfer, it's because of the gluing process. All right, so get your gluing process down correctly and you will have a perfect transfer 100% of the time. All right, okay, the Ricks can do it. Quick transfer paper, if still available, there'll be a link down in the description area and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.